This is the Panasonic S1H, a beast of a camera with a plethora of new features and functions that placed it right there next to all other semi-pro cinema cameras, but Panasonic wanted to push it even further into the pro cinema level, so recently they announced that the camera would be able to record 6K ProRes RAW over HDMI on the Atomos Ninja V recorder by a firmware update. This is great news, as it could potentially be the first time a full-frame hybrid mirrorless camera to not only be able to record RAW, but to record it in glorious 6K resolution. As usual, in this episode, I'll be sharing my deep analysis of what this really means to us as filmmakers. I'll read between the lines so you better understand its true potential, as well as its limitations to get all the knowledge you need to make an informed decision before buying the camera or even the recorder. I'll also compare it to Blackmagic RAW and highlight a couple of unanswered questions, since this is still under development, and its incomplete set of specs could be open to many interpretations. Unlike most other cameras, Panasonic is famous for releasing firmware updates that unlock substantial capabilities rather than adding small improvements or small bug fixes to their cameras, which makes it more of upgrades than updates. So this firmware will be breathing more life into the camera that's already fully loaded with great features. Maybe this would somehow justify the high price tag that is still really hard to swallow. So before I share my thoughts on the subject, let's break it down. As of now, the camera is capable of delivering 4K 4 to 2 10 bit through HDMI, which can potentially be recorded in ProRes over any recorder. But the camera can already record that internally, yet in a compressed format of H.264 and H.265. So the only benefit from recording externally in ProRes is avoiding those internal compressions in all I or long GOP that are harder to work with in post compared to ProRes, which in most cases might not be worth the costs and hassles of buying an external recorder plus media and rigging it to your camera. So with the new firmware update, the S1H will be capable of recording ProRes RAW externally using the Atomos Ninja V in 5.9K up to 30 frames per second and Cinema 4K up to 60 frames per second. Let's look at these resolutions on the sensor and how much will they crop from it. Here's the full frame 3 to 2 6K sensor. At 5.9K, we'll crop it to a full frame 16 to 9 with a slight crop from the sides and shoot up to 30 frames per second which is pretty amazing capturing that resolution in RAW and in full frame from such a small camera. And if you need to crank it up to 60 frames, then we'll crop it to a Super 35 Cinema 4K, which is also pretty impressive. But the missing information now is the bit depth. Strangely enough, Panasonic chose not to disclose this crucial information, which is the main qualifier for any RAW format. So let's try and find hints about what to expect. According to Atomos, ProRes RAW is published as a 12-bit plus format, which doesn't mean that the camera can also output 12-bit. But in this video coverage from News Shooter, Jeremy Young, the CEO of Atomos, said that with the Nikon Z6 and Z7, you get 12-bit color depth and 12-bit linear RAW, which makes me very optimistic about the S1H being an equal or even a more superior camera than the Z6 and the Z7, and should be able to deliver nothing less than 12-bit. Would I be unrealistic if I even wish for 14-bits? Especially that Atomos also announced it's capable of recording up to an impressive 16 bits from the new Sony FX9. The reason why I hope it's 12 bits minimum, as I explained in my previous episode link in the description, a 12 bit image is substantially better in both luminance and chrominance quality over the 10 bit image, as it literally has 64 times more color levels over what the 10 bit image can produce, allowing for more accurate color representation in the source image, and most of all, better luminance transition which is crucial to giving enough breathing space for those 14 stops of dynamic range provided by the V-Log, allowing a smoother Luma roll-off. So Panasonic, please make sure it's a 12-bit RAW output. We have faith in you. Let's talk about compatible recorders. As of now, all Panasonic and Atomos communications are pointing exclusively at the Atomos Ninja V. How about older models? Especially that Atomos published a compatible ProRes RAW recorders list that includes older recorders such as the Shogun Inferno, 7 and Sumo, also, the Neon model is in fact a much more capable recorder than all of the others, as it can record up to 8K without any firmware updates due to its HDMI 2.1 versus the HDMI 2.0 in all their other recorders. So before I answer that, let me briefly explain what the firmware is technically doing. Due to the limitation of the HDMI 2.0 in outputting 6K resolution raw signal, and probably for other licensing reasons, Panasonic and Atomos had to create their own proprietary protocol that doesn't use the HDMI output as a video signal but rather as a data stream that gets encoded in camera, then gets decoded in the Ninja V. So the firmware is teaching the camera how to do that, basically. 
This way, it would unlock much more potential to what a standard HDMI port can deliver. So to answer the question of whether this will be available in other recorders or not, I believe there's a good chance yes. My theory is that Atomos must be focusing on making this work as a proof of concept on the Ninja V first, then hopefully, at a later stage, they might roll it off to other recorders. Please don't take my word for it. This is just my logical theory, and I just hope that's what they'll do. Keep in mind there's a lot of marketing and sales reasons that might prevent them from doing that. But I'm also sure that they know that some of us would love to have this feature on a 7-inch screen instead of 5, so maybe we could expect a Ninja 7 soon. So if you already own a Shogun Inferno or 7, I would recommend to hold on to it. Don't buy the Ninja V now till they officially release the firmware in early 2020 based on their press release. There's a great chance they want to push their last stock of Ninjas before NEB's new announcements. So let's pair the S1H with the Ninja V to compare it to the Blackmagic 6K on the raw recording front, since they both have 6K resolutions as well as share a Super 35 recording format. Of course, there's so many other functional features in both cameras that makes them very unique in their own way, but I'm only focusing here on the relevant ones to the raw recording that control the image quality and aesthetics. Starting with the sensor size, the S1H has an obvious advantage of full frame, which can record 5.9K at 30p. Of course, the Blackmagic falls short in this one with a Super 35 sensor. Now in the Super 35 mode, the S1H will get 4K compared to 6K in Blackmagic, which can max out that resolution at 50 frames per second versus 60 in the S1H. The S1H claims a 14 plus dynamic range, which is obviously higher than 13 stops. But what is the real meaning of this dynamic range value they used? Is it the technical readout of the dynamic range coming out of the sensor, or is it the usable dynamic range? In all cases, both numbers are within the impressive cinematic range. Both of them have dual native ISO, but the signal to noise ratio in the S1H should be higher due to the full frame sensor size versus the Super 35 in the Black Magic. Of course, the pixel pitch would also contribute to that. Theoretically, the sensor size should result in lower perceivable noise at high ISO compared to the Blackmagic 6K, but that surely needs to be tested to be confirmed. As we already know, the S1H didn't announce their bit depth, a very strange piece of info to be left out. Again, let's hope it's 12 bits. We know that Blackmagic offers a 12-bit image, which is the minimum I would expect from a RAW format, especially after the fact of that 16 bits recording we heard about from the Sony FX9. Now the Blackmagic has an advantage over the S1H that it can record RAW internally. No need to buy or rig the camera with any recorders. It can also record externally on SSD for a more affordable solution over internal CFast cards, which I also find practical than recording on an external recorder, simply because SSDs don't require a firmware update. They're much smaller and lighter than recorders, of course. They don't run on batteries, and you can buy them from practically anywhere now. And finally, they're not proprietary and essential for RAW recording like how the Ninja V and its SSDs are to the S1H. Finally, the recording formats, which is not a simple subject to cover, so let me flesh it out for you as an indie filmmaker. So both ProRes and Blackmagic RAW are relatively very new to the market, and they're both fighting for becoming the industry standard, especially in the indie filmmakers mid to pro tier. ProRes RAW was a result of a joint development between Apple and Atomos, so by default it's compatible with Final Cut X, and everyone rejoiced at IBC 2019 when it was announced to be supported natively inside Avid Media Composer and Premiere Pro. But it's still not supported within DaVinci Resolve. Keep in mind ProRes RAW is a patented format, meaning companies need to pay royalties to be able to use it in their cameras and NLEs, which might be a reason why DaVinci is opting out from that format, as by acquiring it, it might hinder the progress of their own RAW format. The Blackmagic RAW on the other hand is developed by Blackmagic Design, which by default is native to their flagship pro-level software, DaVinci Resolve. Also at IBC it was announced to be compatible with both Avid and Premiere Pro via plugin, which is good news, but the catch is that this plugin will restrict the RAW files processing to the CPU only, with no use of any GPU power. That might surely change in the near future, as that's the very first release. And of course it's still not compatible with Final Cut X, which might also change in the future, but I'm not having much hopes on that, honestly. Now let's check which cameras work with those RAW formats. ProRes RAW is only recorded internally in the higher-end DJI drone cameras, such as the Zenmuse X7, but all other compatible cameras, including the S1H of course, will only be able to output ProRes RAW to Atom's external recorders. As for Blackmagic RAW, of course it's by default available internally and externally in all their cinema camera lineup, namely the most famous Ursa Mini and the Pocket 4K and 6K. They remind me of Apple's methodology. They create hardwares, codecs, and softwares that live in a perfectly optimized and seamless ecosystem that gets the best out of their products.
To summarize from a post-production point of view, if you're planning to mostly work within RAW format, the winners here are Premiere Pro and Avid users. They can pick and choose between both cameras and not worry about the RAW format's compatibility, keeping in mind that Blackmagic RAW will not run at its optimum performance yet. As for DaVinci Resolve users, their only logical option is Blackmagic cameras of course. The great news is that their pocket range is very affordable, and they come with a free full version of DaVinci. Finally, if you're a Final Cut X user, then ProRes RAW would make more sense to you, so the S1H Plus Ninja V combo will be your best choice. It'll work natively at its peak performance. Now there are some unanswered questions that we need to consider as well. First, will this be a paid update? Looking at the history of Panasonic, they're already charging the S1 owners $200 to add the vlog with some other video-centric features to the camera, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do charge for this update, but that would leave a bitter taste considering that this is already a relatively expensive camera. Second, will it have any other unannounced resolutions, especially that Panasonic expressed their focus on anamorphic shooters, which is a pro market, then seemingly left them out with no raw anamorphic friendly formats? Also, how about higher frame rates at lower resolution options? Considering it's a raw output, every time you lower the resolution, you'll be able to boost your frame rate, but you'll be cropping it to the sensor in the process. Finally, will this update have any impacts on the battery life? Especially if the data over HDMI theory is true, then there will be some data encoding happening in the camera before running the data through HDMI, which is a plausible explanation behind the very short battery life in the Pocket 4K and 6K. Now let's talk about the price, with updated cost, considering you'll be planning to get the Ninja V for the raw capabilities. The camera itself is for $4,000, then I guess if you're from the vast majority of indie filmmakers with EF lenses, then you'll need to buy the MC21 lens adapter for $250, then of course the Ninja V recorder costing almost $700, plus $200 for the SSD media, for a minimum of 500 GB for the Sony Atom X mini SSD. Then probably will toss another $100 for accessories such as monitor mount, batteries and cables. Finally, if Panasonic decides to charge us for this firmware, then it could be another $200 on average, with a total range of $5,000 to $5,500. Of course I didn't account for any rigs or cages you'll probably end up buying, so keep them in the back of your mind as well. So how reasonable to you is that final price? I'd love to hear your opinions about that in the comments below. But as I was wrapping this episode, I ran across the Zcam F6. It's this tiny full frame camera that shoots 6K RAW and ProRes internally. Frame rates reach 60 frames at 6K, 120 frames at 4K. It has 15 stops of dynamic range and has EF and PL user interchangeable lens mounts. But the new exciting feature they launched at IBC is what I found from this amazing video coverage from Cinema 5D. Here they're showing their lens mount that has an interchangeable built-in electronic ND filter, similar to what you can find in the Canon RF mount, something everyone was waiting for in a smaller form factor such as this camera. The reason I'm mentioning it here is because the camera is for $5,000. Of course the camera still needs a monitor, rigging, media and a lot of accessories which could add another $1 to $2,000 but I feel the price range vis-a-vis -vis the feature set it offers is still worth considering and comparing to the S1H. Keep in mind this is all good on paper, but I need to check it out for myself before jumping into any conclusions. So stay tuned for potentially another episode covering that if I manage to get my hands on it. As for my final thoughts, I do find this ProRes RAW update to be pretty exciting to us all. It surely reconfirmed the S1H as a pro cinema camera. I'm also happy with Panasonic's partnership with Atomos, which is an awesome company that offers revolutionary products tailored for the indie and pro filmmakers. But their product's refresh cycle is too frequent, that could frustrate you as your new product might become almost obsolete shortly after you buy it. So I do hope this update will eventually roll back onto other older Shogun product range. I hope Panasonic will exceed our expectations when they release this update, even though by that time it will be around NAB 2020, and other brands might be ready to release their own raw contenders. Since I just got the camera today, I'll immediately be working on a full review, so please feel free to ask me anything you need me to cover in the comments below, or reach me on Instagram where I'll be posting some updates on my findings as I work my way through them. If you found this preview analysis helpful and you want me to do more of these, then let me know by hitting the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to get notifications when I upload my full review of the camera. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.